Lounge and Sun. Welcome to another episode of the Comic Lounge Podcast. My name's Ryan and my co-host's name is Dylan. Say what's up, Dylan. What's going on, guys? All right, today we got another awesome episode of Comic Talk. We're going to cover Black Hammer Volume 1 by Jeff Lemire, Dean Ormston, and colors Dave Stewart. We're also going to talk about what we've read this week, what we're excited about maybe coming up for next week, and some comic news. Let's uh, let's talk about that fucking uh, Instagram post image put out. Oh, you mean the ellipses? That's yeah. literally, <laughs> literally yeah, cr- just three dots? Yeah, crossover? That shit, uh, I, I, I'm skeptical, dude. Like, I, I saw that, uh, you know, you, you shared a post with me that Bleeding Cool put out in May. Yeah. With, like, Ludacrats and Adventure Man, like, some of those tie-ins. Yeah. I, I don't really get the point of that so much, uh, why think- they would have those crossovers. Like, I want to see, like, I would love to see, like, some like, old-school fucking characters, like, crossing over. Like, give me some Shadowhawk again. You yeah, know? let's see fucking yeah. Savage Dragon I, Spawn, Invincible, stuff like that. You know, I, but, I, I honestly, honestly, I feel like if Spawn isn't involved in this crossover, this whole crossover is a sham. This yeah. whole entire crossover is a sham. Like, how I mean, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be funny if they're trolling us and it has nothing to do with crossing over with any characters? Yeah, what I if think it, that what would if be hilarious. Li- what if it literally is like a comic called Crossover? And it's about, like, people going from life into the world of the dead or something. You know what I mean? Like, I was yeah. thinking about that, too. Like, what if this has nothing to do with, like, what, like Image United 2.0? Right. <laughs> or what if it's a basketball comic book and it's just them doing crossovers? On the oh, court? it's just, like, Allen Iverson? Like, yeah. It's, like, the story of Allen Iverson, but they make him into, like, a basketball super. I'd be down for that. AI is yeah. one of my favorite players. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Fucking, I, I, love, I love basketball, dude. I, I'll say that. To everybody, I, I fuck diehard Lakers fan, dude. You know, I mean, I got I got the Lakers logo on my fucking arm. So, uh, See, that's, dedi- that's yeah. dedication. That's fucking dedication. Well, it was for Kobe mostly, but I had to throw the Laker logo on there. You know, hey, dude, you know how you po- how you posted that uh, that picture of the entire Lakers roster? I literally thought for a second that it was like a St. Kevich freaking like <laughs> like <laughs> like oh man, that's pretty cool. And then I look, oh, it's it's, act- it's an actual picture. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, I'm fucking. I'm nervous. Uh, well, t- I'll talk real quick, real quick. I don't want to fucking make this too too much about basketball, but I, I I'm wondering how that's gonna gonna play out with the fucking bubble. You know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> fucking. I mean, I, I don't get me wrong. I'm excited, dude. Like as much as I love comic books and I love hip hop, dude. I need basketball's my. Tri- it's part of my trinity, bro. I I need that in my life. I need to be able to watch it because I, otherwise I get burnt out on. On other stuff, you know, if I just yeah. like all comics, all hip hop, or whatever. No, you know, no, that's, that's the same. Comics. That's the same. That's the same for me. But um, my third idol in my trinity would have to be football. I'm like just counting down the days for yeah. anything right now. Yeah, I don't. I don't blame you. Back to back to this uh, image with with. Uh, oh yeah, the back to that. I think like too like I, if you remember, well, of course you remember because you do what I do on Twitter. You your comment whore. Uh, <laughs> You like they were talking about like oh Marvel and DC should do a crossover to like get people excited about comic books again, and I personally would be more excited about Image doing it. We see fucking I, I don't want to see Marvel DC again. You know it's that I don't I don't want to see it either because it's just gonna be watered down, dude. It's not gonna be it's not gonna be anything. It's not gonna matter, right? It's not gonna it's, it's, li- it's like. It's literally just going to be books full of splash pages. Like that's that's kind of yeah, what I took from dude, it like, the past couple of times. It's just going to be books full of splash pages. There's going to be no real like heart in it. Like some and, of the best, some of the best comics, like like some of the best team ups in within within the big two. Like all, it had heart in it. Like you know what I mean. Like one of my best, one of my most favorite team ups, like was from the '90s. It was freaking Siren and Deadpool. Like that, was, like one of my favorite team ups. There was heart in that. There was something. I mean, you know, these are two characters that are completely opposite sides of the spectrum, but then you bring them together, and then they, the, together they had, like, one cohesive storyline. Not like, you know, when you take the big two, like, oh, you're going to have Spider-Man encounter the Joker. Like, what? Like, that doesn't, there's nothing about that makes sense to me. Like, how, how do you even make that work? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or freaking Thor versus Superman. And this is literally just going to be all splash pages. So, 
I feel like the days of the DC Marvel crossover thing is pretty much done, unless like they do like a year long thing where it's like you're gonna build a story and build the crises behind it, and you know what I mean. Something something grand has to happen, but I don't see that happening. Yeah, I you know, and don't get me wrong, like you know some of those amalgam comics, like Legends of the Dark Claw. Where they fucking Dark Claw. <laughs> Dark Claw <laughs> you know, was the like, best thing. It was the best thing ever. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I, I, I'll be honest. Like, may, maybe see some of that. That would kind of be cool. But again, like, that's just wait, 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 wait. The do you remember uh, X Patrol? <laughs> uh, dude, of course I do. Do you remember dude, fucking fucking the, uh, the Saturn uh, Starfire? The <laughs> dude, Lobo the Duck. Mix of Lobo and Howard the Duck. Like, you can't make this shit up, bro. <laughs> you know? Amalgam I, comics were just such a... It was, they were so fun, but they were such a mess. Yeah, they are. But, like, I would be almost more down to see that than I would be to see an actual Marvel DC crossover, which, at the end of the day, once it's done, it's not going to be in continuity, which I guess that doesn't really matter in the large scheme of things. Like, if it was a really dope story and it was just a one-off, that'd be cool. No. But again, like I like we were talking before we hit that record button, bro. Like I'm more about the indie stuff now. So Yeah. Yeah. For a bit. You know, like don't get me wrong. I love the characters at DC, love the characters at Marvel. DC's down to I think I have two books on my pull from DC now. Speaking of books in my pull, I didn't even notice it until I got home. But someone put Batman ninety four in my pull and I didn't even notice and I bought it and I looked I checked it out and it's uh <laughs> so sorry dude uh, i'm so sorry i don't even have to pay for these comics i can read them at the shop and like i won't even bring myself to read it <laughs> like i won't even do it to myself <laughs> i think the last I, batman I, issue i read was 91 and that was mm-hmm. it for me i'm like i cannot do it anymore dude i i'm done with this it's over and then like i was reading detective and then they started tying into this fucking dumb joker war and i was like fuck dude I'll just wait. I'll just wait maybe like a year and then I'll But I'll... Ryan, this time it's war. Yeah. Like, yeah. Come on, it's war. Like, 80, I yeah, it's 80 years in the making, man. It's 80 years and they're finally going to duke it out. Great. I've never seen this before. You know, it's the fucking same shit. Yeah. Care about you know, you know, the, You know, the last good Joker run that I, that I really enjoyed was uh, Death of the Family, where, you know, when, like, when Snyder, uh, Snyder had, uh, had the reins of Batman. Yeah, that was dope. I, yeah, I, I, like, I, I even like Endgame. I liked Endgame. I thought that was Endgame, pretty cool. Endgame was pretty cool. Oh, uh, War of Jokes and Riddles was pretty dope. Yes, yes, you're right. That 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 was pretty cool. That was like a weird, more serious Joker, but I enjoyed it. You know, and overall, like I, I liked Tom King's run on Batman. At times, I was like, ah, oh, fucking, this Batman's a little bit too fucking like moody for me. But yeah. overall, I think it was it was a fantastic run. It was a little bit different than we're normally seeing. I still think Grant Morrison's run is one of my all time favorites. Yeah, uh, that's uh, honestly aside from uh, Frank Miller, Nightfall, um, and Snyder, I have the complete run of uh, Grant Morrison's Batman run, which includes the Batman and Robin stuff. And that's Batman some of the best stuff, stuff bro. Some Dude, of the best. It's, it's it's fantastic. Like I bro, love I Dick Grayson as Batman. Well, one of my favorite moments from that was when like uh, it was like uh, what what a what a Dick's first cases, and the cop was like, "Oh yeah, I knew the guy before you. A lot more serious. I like you better." <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was perfect, dude. Because he like, was yeah. he was like he was a more agile. He was more limber. He wasn't all bulky. You know what I mean? Like his I, I don't know. I just I think they should have let him go with the fucking. With the role a little bit longer, I think it. I but I'm pretty sure it was what New Fifty Two is what derailed that. Um, yeah, even though I think so. Even though Bruce had come back prior, so there was technically two Batman. Yeah, you know what I mean. There was Batman for Gotham, which was Dick Grayson, and the Batman of the Justice League also. And then yeah. Bruce was more like he was part of Batman Incorporated, which was still always a weird concept to me, but still kind of cool. But yeah, what they're doing now with Batman, I just, I, it's just, it's so basic. It just doesn't feel like there's any groundbreaking like stuff with the character. Like Tom King really, he tried to do something unique and different. You know, like even that's there. You know, I've I've talked about this before. The I am suicide, uh, 
the I am suicide storyline that Tom King did, where mm -hmm. you know, he tells of Bruce like trying to commit suicide after his parents died. That made so much sense. Like where people could probably get mad at that, it made sense. You know, like your yeah. fucking parents just got murdered in front of you. Like, of course you're gonna. This is gonna be fucking extremely traumatic. Not just the fact that you know eventually he becomes a fucking crime fighter, but like, how does he deal with this as a young boy? Like, so like yeah, that, it was those kind of things that like really elevated elevated the character for me in a way that you know very few people have been able to do. Now we're with James Tynan, which is apparently he's one of the hottest writers in comics. Uh, I don't know. Not to say that he's a bad writer. I liked his detective comics run. I thought it was fun. It was a good contrast to Tom King's run at the time on, on the main Batman title. But yeah. this this new one, it's just I, I just find it lacking lacking that depth and weight that I would like to have. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, 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 yeah. It's just not it's just not for me. Uh, to anybody that likes it, cool. I'm glad you're enjoying it. But I won't be back until James Tynan is probably off the book because I don't see who would you. Who would you like to see take over after James Tinian? Is it Tinian or Tinian? It's I don't know. <laughs> it's one of those. Tiny and Tinian, we'll call him that. James Tiny and Tinian the third, you know. Tiny and Tinian, all right. Yeah, but I don't know, dude. Like that's 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 hard to. Uh, it's hard for me to pick. This is a fucking pipe dream, dude. Okay, mm -hmm. so <laughs> this is. I know this will never happen, but I would love Jason Aaron to write Batman. You know, dude, dude, I, that's I, like I, the craziest I, I would, thing I could think of that that I think would be absolutely perfect. I've how seen his. Feel, how would you feel if Bendis took over? For I wouldn't. Batman? I, I wouldn't mind it. I don't mind his writing of the character, but I don't know how a run of Batman looks with Bendis. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's, but he's good. Like, look at his Daredevil. Yeah. His Daredevil is Daredevil was probably awesome. one of the was... best Daredevil runs in history, yeah. next to Frank Miller. Right. So, yeah, I would love to see Bendis, but I was just trying to think, like, really outside of the box because mm -hmm. I've also said how much I'd like to see a Jason Aaron Spider-Man because I want Nick Spencer off the book. I, I, I can't stand Amazing Spider-Man, and that hurts I, me I, to I, say. I haven't, I haven't been into, like, um, what Mario said. He, I, I thought about what he said. I'm like, yeah, you're right. I really haven't been into a Spider-Man book for a, a very long time. But, yeah, that's... But, I, I mean, yeah, but, I mean, like... I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what Batman needs right now. I mean, come on. Like he's <laughs> he's over freaking over two thousand issues with like with him involved. Like you know what I mean? With, with, like you know what I mean? And it's like, what do you do with that? <laughs> like, just take it in a different direction. You don't re you don't regurgitate the tried and fucking true fucking you know whatever formula that people seem to keep going back to. Tom King did something different. He basically made it. In 85 issue love story with Catwoman. That's a yeah. Batman Catwoman story from pretty much beginning to end almost, you know, yeah. with other stuff in between. But it also was like a, a deep character look at Bruce. Bruce was just as m a much of a focus as, you know, his time in the costume. But like, you know, I, I don't know. I don't I don't know what works. I Maybe you just boil it down to like a, a, a crime noir type setting where like you take away some of his toys and yeah. just you get down to like the detective aspect of it and just his he has his fighting skills not what Tynan's doing which is like giving him some of these most ridiculous fucking toys now and it's just like <laughs> oh my god dude you're make, like you're just making him like almost impossible to beat i don't want to see that like yes we get it he's a genius and he's a master fighter you know but let's see him use those skills not fucking his Batmobile is a goddamn transformer. <laughs> you know, I don't want to see that. You mean you don't like, like the mobile Hellbat? Oh, no, no, dude, <laughs> out of here, dude. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even want to waste my time talking about him anymore. Let's let's uh, jump into what else we read this week. I'll, I'll tell you about a book I, I I couldn't even stomach through. What? Empire Fantastic Four. I read 10 pages of that bullshit, and I put it down. I'm like, nope, not not doing it. Will not do it. I read the Avengers issue of Empire by Al Ewing. Fantastic. Yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. I who's, can get who's, writing, who's writing the Fantastic Four? Dan Slott. Come on, Dan. 
I mean, <gasps> the only good thing I can point to uh, in his career where I was like, great, and I haven't even read it, is Silver Surfer. And that's only because I'm taking the word of people's opinions that I trust. Oh, I loved it. And, I, I, I and loved it. I didn't like his Fantastic Four. His Spider-Man had its moments. But overall, if like if I were to grade it, it would probably be a C. Mm-hmm. Like all of his stuff <laughs> together. I'm just being honest. No, yeah, um, no. Yeah, I just I don't know, man. I I'll read Empire One this this coming you know this week. But the Fantastic Four issue was fucking boring. I couldn't stand it. Uh, I think that's been the problem with the with the current with the current Fantastic Four run. Like um, I, I was into it for like maybe three issues. When he, yeah. well, it was uh, Dan Slott took over. Was it when, when they got back? You know, essentially when they got back, I read oh, right. like 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 three or four issues. I can't remember. And then I was like, all right, I'm I'm I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I you know, yeah. and I would like to see a good Fantastic Four run. You know, especially reading uh, Hickman stuff. Yeah, but uh, fuck, I don't know, dude. I, I'm I'm kind of burnt out on crossovers, dude. A little bit, you know, like I just let the fucking main series breathe a little bit. Is, I, is how I feel. <laughs> You know, have, you, but, have you seen? Have you seen the what do you call it? the the entire release list for this whole Empire freaking thing? I don't think that that's. Act- oh, are you sure? I uh, hope not. I yeah, hope, I because I re- yeah, but I remember somewhere reading, and maybe I'm wrong, but I think some of these issues that they were going to have doing the like because of uh, COVID are not yeah. going to come out. That book, if you notice, will have ads April. So these yeah. books were obviously printed prior. So mm-hmm. I don't think that that's still going to be the checklist. I, okay. I, I don't know what I don't know what the final count is on tie-ins, but I do think that they're they're uh, skimming down, which is very smart. I think Marvel's yeah, this... handled Marvel's handled this whole thing with uh, COVID. I think while they should have maybe released a little bit more books or at yeah. least every week, I do think at least they're not flooding the market like DC. And speaking of DC, dude, the fucking this was the first week of um, Lunar. Yeah, shipping books yeah, out. Do they? The books came out came in on Friday. They came oh, in. Wow. Yeah. So like, not only were they on time, they were earlier than you know the rest of the publishers. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, and I mean, we get the other books on Monday for release on Wednesday. These yeah. books technically are for Tuesday, but came in on Friday, which I think is pretty cool. And then they were packed really fucking well. Not a lot of damages. I heard um, that. I, I heard that. I heard that at the shop. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I didn't uh, check. I didn't check the books in because I don't work Fridays. But I saw them, and while there, you know, there was a little creases in the spines on some stuff. Overall, pretty fucking good. Diamond, they fucking. I don't know who they they got paying to package those books up, dude. But they need to do better because I've noticed it just seems like maybe the people packing. I don't want to say diamond, but the people packing don't give a fuck because yeah. there was a lot of damages in this shipment this week and there was damages mm. there's been damages in the past couple weeks that i've been noticing and it's just like damages to the point where you're like what the fuck did you do like did you take it in your hand and twist the book and then put it in the box like that really it's like that kind of damages yeah it just doesn't whoa yeah dude pretty fucking bad like i think at least seven titles had books damaged to where we didn't even have enough for subs at that point. Wow. So, Jeez. I mean, well, not to not to say that I, I'm going to get like a fucking lunar tattoo on my DC sleeve, on my yeah. arm. But, you know. so <laughs> Right next so, to your Laker tattoo? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so far, so far, so good, though, with them. You know, like, we'll see as, as time progresses. Like, you know, Nick brought up a good point. Like, they only have to deal with one publisher. My argument to that was like, well... You can still, it doesn't matter how many books you're dealing with, you can still fucking damage them. I think Diamond can attest to that because last week when we had only indie stuff coming out, there mm-hmm. was still damages. And there wasn't even that many books to package, yet there was still stuff not, not packaged right. Uh, but yeah, you know, like, so kind of, I'm kind of optimistic about it. We'll see, like, I, again, like, I don't think I'll it's, be the it's, one. it's all about consistency, though. Like, you know, this is the yeah. first week, of course, so you're going to make sure everything's right. Like, right. if they, but if they remain, if they can, you can, you know, consistently do that, then I think it's a win. Yeah. I'd like to see that. I'd like to, I, I've been arguing, right? I've been, I've been talking shit <laughs> about, yeah. about DC and their decision. Don't, no matter what, even if they send six months of perfect looking books, no damages mm-hmm. on time, 
I'm I still will stand by what I said that the way they handled it was shitty. Don't I, don't yeah. ever get it twisted. If I start like propping them up, saying that oh they're delivering their books on time, they're doing good, no damages. I still will never change the fact that I think the way they did it and the timing of how they did it was shitty. I will always feel that way. That will never change. But maybe if this makes Diamond work a little bit better too, like maybe it'll be good for the industry. I, I don't know. You know, if Diamond uh, if, I, if Diamond decides to freaking up their game, that'd be great too. Yeah. Then everybody yeah. wins. Exactly. So uh, if there's, is there anything else you want to add? Uh, anything that you read this week before uh, that you were excited about? I know you're a huge Deceased fan, so do you want to okay, talk well, I, about I haven't, that? I haven't, I haven't read it yet because I've been reading Descender – and I read the entire Black Hammer main, uh, two main story arcs. Cool. So better, better choice. I had, I, I, had, <laughs> I, had no, I had no time for anything new this week. Yeah, cool. I mean, that's that's a fair enough answer, you know? Um, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, And, like, I'm, I'm halfway through the big deluxe edition volume one of Descender. Oh, not uh, halfway through. I'm almost done. I'm, like, three quarters of the way. And, uh, Wow. Wow. Like, I think we should just start a new hashtag, like, Dylan's always late to the party. And, like, let's just, like, for every indie run that I'm reading from now on, just Dylan's just late to the party. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, start, I'll, start, I'll start sharing books that I think you should read, and then I'll hashtag you Dylan's always late to the party. Yeah. Start. Dylan's always late to the party. It's Thanks. funny, because in high school, I was never late to the party. I know, <laughs> dude. You know how much shit I learned from you? And now I'm imparting <laughs> wisdom on you, and this is great, dude. But you know what? I think yeah. that's always going to be our friendship. I think you will always show me hip hop. I will always show you comics, and that's why our friendship is fucking so dope. It's it, it, it's symbiotic, bro. Yeah, for sure. It's but, symbiotic. Um, so, so let's get into Black Hammer, Volume One. I'll read off the credits real quick. Written by Jeff Lemire, one of my personal favorites. I think pretty much everybody that is associated with Comic Lounge can say the same thing. Jeff Lemire is one of the best writers in the biz. We got art yeah. by Dean Ormston. Colors by Dave Stewart and Letters by Todd Klein. I fucking love the book. I have not reread it. I reread it for this, this episode, just to kind of refresh my memory. I've read every single tie-in to this. So I'm a huge fan. But Dylan, I'd like you to start off since uh, you're new to the game. Uh, uh, new to the Hammerverse. Let's let's hear oh, your wow. fucking thoughts. Okay, I, I just I just I honestly think that like the the way that they took, they, they didn't take tropes from from uh, from other comic books and other characters and kind of like make them into caricatures. Mm -hmm. But what they did, they kind of like gave this. It's, it's like a nod and like an extra sentiment to uh, the characters we love from the golden age. And I I, I love how it was executed. It it, it 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 gave them this feeling. It gave them that like. It was basically a story about what happens after, you know, when, when they forget about you, when you're no longer needed as a superhero. Kind of like with the Golden Age stuff, you know what I mean? Kind of like with the original, like, uh, Green Lantern and the original Flash and all that stuff. Like, they kind of, like, fade off into the background, into obscurity. But with this, it kind of, you know, they disappeared. Obviously, they disappeared. And it was 10 years. And in that 10 years, they gave these characters... They rehumanize, not dehumanize, but rehumanize these characters, and I just love the way that that uh, Lemire took all these tropes and amalgamized them into these wonderfully written, freaking tragic characters that you just fucking have a bleeding heart for every single one of them. Even Madam Dragonfly, I, like by the end of the of the second story arc, I was just like, fuck, like her too, yeah. bro, like it, it, you know. What what I really like from this from this particular volume is how each issue kind of it was like an origin story for each at the same time while at the same time still continuing with the main story of right. life on the farm. You know what I mean? I, I really uh, loved I really loved how that was executed because Barbie Barbalian is like one of my favorite characters. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like he's just an absolute savage, but also like dude, you just feel for him. You just feel so bad because. Literally, not accepted on two planets. And I like that they add, you know, like that he that he's conflicted with his own sexuality too. I yeah. know that it's not a main part of the book, but mm -hmm. that little undertone added that interesting dynamic because Gail, who's my favorite character, um, oh, I, oh, <laughs> I, yeah. I'm dead serious about that whole. 
hey, bitch, nice house. I'm just going to do that to everybody's house. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> I, lo- I love her fucking character, dude. I, I, I'm not even, like, just saying yeah. this to say it, you know? So, like, her fucking feelings with, for Barbalian, then then she realizes, like, because he, he confides in her, right, that he, yeah. that he doesn't know how he's feeling and how to tell that person. So she thinks it's her. No, nope, yeah. it's not her, you know? So, like, like at all. She, right, and she's trapped just to fucking, you know, for anybody that hasn't read, without spoiling too much, she is trapped in, in, the, body you know, of a because, child. in the body of a child because that's when she originally got her powers was as a kid. So every time she says the magic word, which is, you know, kind of like Shazam, Captain Marvel yeah. from DC Comics, you know, yeah. she transforms into the Golden Gale. Even as, she, you know, when she's not Golden Gale, she ages in real time. So she's actually, like, in her 50s. And so when she was, you know, before they get trapped on the farm, which is where this takes place, she was in her Golden Gale identity. So now she's trapped as the kid, you know, so like she has to go to school in this fucking town, you know, (laughs) and she's like she's like a cigarette smoking alcoholic, which is like great. It's it's (laughs) hilarious, dude. Like she gets in trouble in Abraham, who's like, I would say he's kind of like the amalgamation of like a, a Batman Captain America. Uh, Captain America type character, uh, a pulpy character, right? And yeah. So he, he, he essentially had no superpowers. He essentially had right. no superpowers. So, so. I'll, I'll just read off the characters, too, so, like, anybody listening can uh, can identify, right? So Abraham, Abraham is, like, the father-type figure. He's the one that's – he is the father, quote-unquote, of this family to mm-hmm. the rest of the town that don't know them. You got Barbalian, who's, like, the Martian Manhunter. So he's a shapeshifter too. Like he's a shapeshifter, right? And then yeah. Abraham Slam, like I said, Madam Dragonfly, which is kind of like uh, Enchantress slash Enchantress Raven slash Zatanna, Zatanna right? slash then, Scarlet Witch. Yeah, and you got Colonel Weird, who's <laughs> he's my second favorite character. He's my second he's favorite like, character too. Yeah, I, like, I, I just feel <laughs> he's like on an acid trip the entire freaking. Yeah, <laughs> he's like he's like the Adam Strange of the group, right? And, and so they they all are portraying themselves as this family in this town and after they get trapped you know like there was a big battle they with don't really dark, show with it dark side galactus <laughs> and then afterwards they're transported to the farm black hammer is also another hero he's the only one with like, actual superpowers well but, no, they, well uh, no no well, well golden gale had superpowers too right and then one. and then so he's like a thor type character and he dies like shortly after they're there and they kind of allude to it. You don't really understand why, what happened um, in volume one. You learn that later. But yeah. And then you also have Talkie Walkie, which is a fucking uh, another funny character, a robot, uh, a robot that is yeah, a female robot, a female robot who's Colonel Weird's partner. Just the dynamic between all of them. Every single one of these characters' personalities is completely different from the next. Yeah, you know, and Lemire's, but but they complement each other. That's that's they, another thing too. Like each character's character and like you know, like their role doesn't take away from another character's. Like you know what I mean? They're they're, they're so they're so written well, like that you can easily differentiate who's what as opposed to like oh these people are on the same side and it, I don't know what I'm trying to get at here. But yeah, they're really, they're they're really written extremely well and. I need to read the tie list, the the tie ins and the spin offs because if there's more of these characters, I really want to read about them. I want to read the Black Hammer Justice League. That's what I want to read. Uh, yeah, I would read that last. I think the the best tie in one for me that's been collected at least mm. uh, is the Doctor Star. Doctor Star. I don't, okay. Yeah, I don't know if they renamed it to like Doctor Tomorrow. I think they might have changed it. It originally was called Doctor Star, but it's an homage and like a almost a love letter to uh, James Robinson's Starman series mm-hmm. from DC Comics that, that yeah. was in the mid '90s and ended in the early 2000s, right. uh, which is a classic. I ha- haven't been able to read it all because it's not all collected. I did read the first two Omni- Omnibuy that they did re- release in softcover, but the hardcovers are damn near impossible to find for a reasonable price. But that series was great, dude. I mean, the characters' names even uh, Jimmy Robinson, I think. So like, he even calls the, the the hero after the creator, you know. So, but yeah, the That's Lemire's character, cool. yeah, Lemire's characterization is has always been, in my opinion, one of his strong suits. 
he mm-hmm. can humanize even the most superhero characters and, and bring a bring a level of realness. I don't know how else to say it to them. You know, like where they just they're normal people. The fact that they have powers is like right. It's, it's, not, it's, it's secondary. It's secondary yeah. to what's important. Exactly. You know, I didn't I, I didn't know Dean Ormson's art before this book. I know he's done some like Vertigo stuff. You know, after I had did an email interview with him like shortly after I read this because I'm like, oh, I've got to talk to this guy. His art style just suits this book so perfectly. It's a style that, you know, I definitely opened my mind up to different artistic styles. Like when I was a kid, like it had to be kind of a certain way for me, right? And yeah, then same. As same. I got older, Agreed. as I got older, my taste changed a little bit more. And I started liking a certain type of style at that age. And I really feel that within the last five years, 100%, probably a little bit before that as well, I am so open to varying art styles. Whereas I might have been like, oh, I can't read this because of the art. It's so ig- It was so ignorant of me because like, I missed out on so many great stories when I was younger because I just couldn't get past a certain art style, right? Yeah. And I love Dean Ormson's art. I just yeah, I fucking no, Dean absolutely Ormson. love it, dude. And then you got fucking one of the best colorists in the biz, Dave Stewart. Yeah. Dude. His color palette is just like... <sighs> it's so good. Like, yeah, it's... it's like, like, like you like you and uh, Jen were saying, like, you know, freaking colorists are like unsung heroes that need to be freaking raised up on pedestals. Like, they do such fucking phenomenal work. And some of these just wouldn't be if they didn't pick these uh, these particular colorists, you know? It's just... Uh, that's another thing. The, the art about this, too, it's like... I don't know. It's like it's like Ormston. Ormston has kind of like a... It, it kind of gave me, like, Hellboy feels, but with, like, without as much blacks and shadow tones yeah i like, think it also helps that dave stewart colors the hellboy universe too so that's yeah, kind of exactly. like a crossover exactly so you know what i mean like i i, I definitely got the hellboy feels and like like yeah uh, as far as far as like the the art and the colors with lemire's uh, Lem- uh, lemire's like over like the way he writes there's this general sense of like dread and or sadness like within like his writing that these colors and these particular lines and these particular artists like really freaking make that story that much more powerful. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's crazy. I like it. I mean, you know, as far, as far as the entire run for Hellboy for me was like, I, I, I think the ending could have been a little better. I mean, it was cool. Like, you know what I mean? I'm not going to ruin anything, but you know what I mean? Like, I just yeah. think, I just think it could have been a little bit more climactic, but I'm- it was a good, it was a good ending. I just thought it. I I thought in my head, friggin', you know, this is this is the Marvel DC in me that it was gonna be some crazy ginormous world ending, world shaking, world shattering payoff, but it wasn't. But that in that in turn comes from from the big two, like the big two was all like always about these big payoffs, big payoffs, big payoffs. Yeah. But you know, but like I'm learning that with indie titles, like. Just because it didn't end the way I wanted it to end or how I thought it should end didn't mean that it was a bad ending. Exactly. And I think, like, for me, yeah. And I think for me, too, like, I really like the small moments in comic books. Kind of this in the same way that I feel with film, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's those small Mm -hmm. moments between two characters where it's just, like, the raw emotion. You know, like, there's a scene... And I think it might be the second issue of this trade where Gail is just, she's just so wanting to like be out of this young body, you know, like she just wants to be herself. Mm. And she starts like crying and screaming out that name, Zafram, Zafram. And she's yelling. Oh, oh, yeah. And the emotion in that page, dude, like it's not just the perfect combination of Lemire's script with Ormson's fucking writing, Dave Stewart's uh, coloring, dude, like that fucking just that one panel of her screaming with the tears on her face. Yeah. I mean, I, th- that's what comics is about to me now, dude. It's not about yeah. those big fucking moments, splash pages. Which don't get me wrong, I will go read an old '90s comic and enjoy the shit out of those. But yeah, and I and I still like them. But I love that's what I love about indie stuff, dude. Is it's not about that. 
It's about good story. You know, it's not about shock value. It's not about being that blockbuster type movie story. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's it's, it's less about the jaw drops and more about the heartaches, dude. Exactly. <laughs> like, and that's what's that's what's great about this series, and I'm so glad. I'm so fucking glad. I can't even explain it to you eloquently, dude. Like how fucking happy I am that you picked up this book. You know, like that's one of the best things I love about comics and being so passionate about comics myself and yeah. and having the site, having the podcast, having the YouTube is to be able to share my love with other people. And it means even more when I'm sharing with somebody that I care about and is a, a close friend of mine uh, and being able to like, I love you too, Ryan. I love you too. And uh. being able to like impart something on you and then like having it affect you in, in such a way, like where like res it resonates with you, like on an emotional level. And yes, you can it does. So it does. like, it just means so, so much to me, dude. Like I'm so fucking happy that you got into it and then you fucking couldn't stop and read almost all four volumes of the main series. I did, I did, I did, I did read all four volumes of the main series. How, how it resonates for me, it's like, all right, so what a lot of our readers don't know, like, I, I used to make music. I used to do hip-hop. I used to rap. I used to perform shows on freaking in Hollywood, opened up for crazy, like, you know, E-40, Mellow Man Ace, Devin the Dude. Like, we, me and my friends, we were really out there doing it, right? And then at, at event, and in turn, I kind of felt like I was a superhero in a sense, like, that's kind of like the persona that like I kind of projected out there that I was super, I was larger than life, right? And then there came a time where I was just getting too old for this shit and I needed to do something about it and become something better and, you know, and how it resonated, how, how this particular story resonated for me was like, it was coming to grips with that because I had to go through something similar to that where I was coming to grips with no longer being that portrayed larger than life individual and instead i had to become i had to make start making the transitions into becoming a family man this this story really touched me and like each character each character like there was something that I, I i got from each character where it was like hell yeah i fucking feel that like you know with abe it was just like i just want to be happy with the woman i love with yeah. um with golden gale is just like i feel trapped but i also just want to be with the person i love like, you know what I mean? With mm -hmm. freaking Barbie, what, what I love about him the most is that regardless of, like, the entire world didn't agree with what you were doing, regardless of what it was, he still had his family. Like, he still had his family, and he still had Gail, who, like, really cared about him. And I also appreciated his snarky comments every time, like, Abe would like, do something. But anyway, that's, that's the side of the point. Um, and then, yeah, so each character... I. I really, it, it really resonated with me on a personal level, like, you know what I mean? And that's, and I don't get that with any, uh, with a lot of the big two stuff. Like, yeah, don't get me wrong. I'll sit here and freaking watch zombies, freaking attack Batman and freaking Superman all day. I, I love that shit. But, you know, like you said, it's shock value. It's, it's more for the jaw dropping stuff. Like, you know what I mean? As opposed to like really breaking it down to a sentimental level. And I feel like Lemire is like excellent at that. I'm reading Descender right now, and I'm, I'm I don't know if you remember, Ryan. I sent you that picture where he finds the, his uh, where uh, yeah. Sam finds Bandit, and I was like, yeah. this shit's gonna fuck me up. I already know. And that, that and I'm, I'm telling you, that's like that moment, that like like the little moments. Like, don't worry, boy. You, I, I'll never leave you alone again. Like, ah, uh. <laughs> like, uh. <laughs> yeah. Let me let me tell you, bro. Driller, have you met Driller yet? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Driller and Tullis. Um, Let me tell you, bro. Driller. Drill, yeah. Oh, my God. There's, I, a, there's, I, I, there's, I, a, there's I, a moment There's a moment that will come later. You'll know when you see it. Mm -hmm. I want you to fucking message me after. I'm going to. This is the one. This is like the series I probably would have. I would have recommended before Black Hammer. Just mm -hmm. because, like, I. Well, while, while Black Hammer makes sense because you like superheroes. Same with me. Um, mm -hmm. I like to do the thing that's not expected. So I would have been like, read this. You know what I mean? Like, especially mm -hmm. because I think that not to take anything away from Dean Ormson, but Dustin Nguyen's art, his Can watercolor. I just take, oh my God. Is, I, is, never is knew, I never knew. I never knew you could do that with watercolor. Yeah. Oh yeah. I never knew that what Dustin Nguyen was doing with watercolor was possible. I had no idea. I thought when I saw Descender cover art, I thought it was just the cover art. Cause you know how you, you, you see cover art, it's extremely beautiful. Then you open it up, it's not that. 
that's that was my perception of a, a descender when I first encountered it at the shop. I was like, oh, cool. And I never even bothered to open it up because I'll be honest with you, sci-fi comics, not really my thing. But this, this isn't, this is, yeah, it's a sci-fi comic with sci-fi undertones. But like I said, it's like, like what you said about Lemire, his characterizations of making humans, making making his characters more human is freaking amazing. Like, I, I feel that Tim 21 is the most precious cargo in the universe and he needs to be protected. And he's a robot. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's crazy. This, this. His writing is excellent. Like, you know what I mean? I'm, I mean, obviously I'm reading Family Tree, which is great, but like, no, nah, it's not, it's not like this. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm sure, no. I'm sure, I'm sure like as the story arc progresses with uh, Family Tree, it'll be something extremely crazy. But as far as finished works, freaking, I, I love Black Hammer. I love Descender. I'm, I'm, and I'm like really looking forward to like diving in more into his stuff. I'm thinking about the Essex County after this. Oh, I love that book. Okay. I love that fucking book, dude. It's great. It's so good. I'm I'm definitely going on a bender right now. Like, let's see, let's see, let's see, like if I can pull myself out of a hole of deep depression after I'm done with this. But we'll see. <laughs> it's fantastic. Like, you know, I messaged you the other day. Like, Marvel and DC need to catch up to these indie titles. They need to focus more on letting their characters grow as opposed to having the same essential characters grow within extremely large scale crossover events where there's so much going on that you can't appreciate the character growth. I mean, I think the problem is, is like they're fucking scared, dude. You, you see stuff when you see some indie sensibilities uh, seep in to some of their titles, it doesn't last long. Like I've said before, Power Man and Iron Fist, I'll keep saying that series because I loved it. I think it was amazing. I don't think it should have been canceled when it was, mm -hmm. but they can't handle shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they tend to cancel stuff if it's not in their house style. I don't, I don't know, man. Like, will you see it's just event after event, dude, empire is not even done. And they're already talking about the null, the Donny Cates fucking crossover. <laughs> Don't, don't get me wrong. I'll be honest, bro. You're like, yes, I kind of want to fucking read it. You know, like, I'm not gonna, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna sit here and bullshit anybody. I do want to read it, but that's all you guys are doing. It's like event, event, event. Like, I want some deep character studies, dude. That's what yeah. I want to see. I want to see a story like Spider Man Blue. You know, like yeah. Daredevil Yellow, where it's like it's not so much about the superheroics; it's about the character. Even Mario said, uh, because he knows how much I love Flash, he's like, I don't know why they don't lean into the police procedural part of it. You know, like, let's see Barry. Let's see him investigating the crimes and, like, trying to fucking decipher the clues. Like, I was like, you know what? That would be kind of cool, but DC will never do it. Yeah. You know? And, like, uh, and like the thing is, like, what I've never understood about Marvel and DC, like, okay, take Image, for instance, right? They have these self-contained characters in their own self-contained universes handling their own self-contained storylines mm -hmm. right no crossover needed but they're so successful why can't marvel do that again because if you think about it think about claremont's run aside from a few cameo spots there was no like big like crossover avengers versus x-men freaking you know what i mean it was just their linear story and not linear, but a singular story that revolved around X amount of characters and the cameos had no real like greater effect on what was going on. Like it was all it was all within the family per se. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I don't know. I it's just I'm just tired I'm just tired of big two crossovers. Exactly. And that's I'm why tired, I'm tired uh, I'm tired of Marvel having to rely on Gimmicks, other they're gimmicks. No, yeah, they're gimmicks. Having to rely on other characters to boost up other books as opposed to just making their other books that much better in their own writing. Yeah, I mean, and that's why I will continue to push indie books to not only people at the shop, but to everybody I fucking talk to, man. And that's why okay. I will continue to supply you with some good recommendations because – you got a lot of catching up to do, man. There's a lot I know you haven't read. And that's not an insult. Uh, you know, like, you just... I, I, you, I, I just don't think you've, like, 
been exposed to some of the stuff even that yeah. I, like not even like some of the more modern stuff but even some stuff from like old vertigo maybe that you haven't heard of smaller publishers too you know like yeah there's no, just... no it's true and it's true like i haven't that i think my early days of comic books like literally i went in for marvel and dc yeah same here and then and then image obviously but you know what i mean i can tell you right now looking at my trade paperback show aside from marvel dc and image i have Three. <laughs> three. <laughs> that's three crazy. Three non-Marvel, Image, or DC books. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. My list is growing. I have Top Shelf. I have Fanographics. I have Drawn in Quarterly. I have First, Second. Um, dude, I got I got all sorts of shit. And yeah, I know. I'll keep these coming for you, dude. Like, don't even, don't even trip. Like, I, I'm not going to flood you with stuff. Uh, but, yeah, if you ever are, like... You know, you just have to tell me the type. You can tell me a type of story you want to read, and I can guarantee you, I could fucking pick out at least three to five books instantly off the top of my head that I could give you to read. Um, but you're right now. The main focus, I think, I, I would love to see you do is read Love and Rockets. Um, oh, you know? Love and Rockets, yeah. Like I said, I found that on Hoopla, and yeah, so, uh, I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, but, I think yeah. you'll really enjoy it. I think the it's just great. It's just, it's slice of life, dude, but it's just, the characters are so good, dude. They're just written so fucking well. It's it, by the end of the time, by the end of all the volumes that are published right now, you will feel like, you know, these, these women, like these characters, like they're your friends. Like that's the type of writing that, especially like Jaime Hernandez's stories. Um, that's how I felt about paper girls. That's why I love those paper girls. Like I felt like they were my friends. <laughs> yeah, and I, lo I love that kind of stuff in writing, dude. When you can, when you can feel like you know the characters as if they were standing right next to you. Yeah, and like you know, and and like uh, it makes you sad that it makes makes me sad that some of the series are over because we don't see where they go from there. We don't see the the the, the, the evolution after the comic, after the adventure is over. And I love that. I love that. Like um, like I I I, I wish Marvel and DC would start doing like you know like runs like that where it's only x amount of issues and that's it we'll never hear from them again never hear from those characters again we'll just have that one fantastic story that we can hold and cherish forever it's like you know charles dickens didn't make a tale of two cities part two you know what I mean? yeah but yeah but we live in a day and age where like if they if especially marvel and dc they got something hot bro they will fucking milk that for everything it's worth take a look at null like yeah. I was saying, take a look at the Batman who laughs. Take yeah. a look at Gwenpool. Take a look at fucking. I mean, dude, the, I could keep going. Like they just yeah. they oversaturate when they're like, oh wait, this character's hot. Let's put out twenty fucking books. Let's do a variant cover for every single book we publish with that character on it. You know, like no, dude, no. You're you're taking away what made that character the magic. special. You're taking away the magic. Yeah. So <clears throat> I would love to see them do like. Like Tom King, like the Tom King type of writer, or Tom King, to do like the Great Lakes Avengers, but drag them, like you know, freaking drag them and make them these fucking awesome characters out of nowhere. But first, like, ring them through the mud. I would love that. Big Bertha, can you imagine like the type of story you would write for Big Bertha? That'd be crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even know. I don't even know how you at attack uh, characters like that, but I'm sure that they could do it. You know? Yeah, but you uh, know what I mean? Like, look. Adam Strange, I had no interest in Adam Strange, but oh, see, now I, I'm like all for it. See, I had read some some cool Adam Strange in the past, so he's like DC's John Carter, right? Kind of, yeah. So like, I was I was looking forward to it on more than just the level of oh Tom King's doing it. I was like, oh cool, they're doing Adam Strange, you know? Because oh. like there was a there was a book that Andy Diggle wrote and Pas Pascal Ferry was the artist mm -hmm. on that came mm -hmm. out in the early 2000s. And it was great, dude. It was so fucking cool. But again, Tom King, like, I was more excited because I wanted to see his take on it. You know, like, I was like, what the mm -hmm. fuck is he going to do after what he did with Mr. Miracle? Again, Mr. Miracle, I was a fan of that character also before yeah. then. So I, I, mean, like, Jack, I like Mr. Miracle. It's Jack I like Mr. Miracle because, uh, freaking, uh, what do you call Because uh, Justice League Unlimited had a couple of Mr. Miracle Big Bertha episodes. And I was like, oh, yeah, they're dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, in closing, uh, I just want to like cap off on, on Black Hammer real quick before we close out the show. I love the book. I recommend it to anybody. It doesn't matter what you're into. This yeah. book will fucking resonate with you. Uh, I mean, Dylan, look, look what Dylan did. He, we, 
Last weekend we fucking recorded and we said we're gonna read volume one and he's read four. So I think that can attest to the magic that is this series. Well, I read all four within three days. Yeah, I mean it's hard to put it down. I mean it I is. even I mean I even read volume one. I was gonna split it up into two reads and I I couldn't even put it down. I I ended up staying up late that night just to finish it, you know. And oh, and that's the thing too with the, with this particular with this particular uh, series too. It's like even as heavy as the tone is. It's not like a chore to read, like you know, like there 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 are some that are just phenomenal, like Watchmen. Watchmen is so fucking is good, and I'm like you know we talked about it before, like how I thought Watchmen was freaking overrated, and then I revisited yeah. it like 15 <laughs> years later, and now yeah. like I'm freaking praising it to the high heavens. But yo, Watchmen is such a chore to read. Holy crap! Like you know, it's it's great, but this this is great too because it's not a chore to read. It's something that you can literally probably knock out a volume in one sitting oh yeah easily yeah yeah more, more indies. indies and speaking of indies that you and i already picked our book for next well i picked it because we're taking turns so uh euthanauts by teeny howard and nick robles that is from the black crown imprint over at idw that Sh shelly bond <laughs> curated she was kind enough to send me the volumes of of that line that i didn't already have so I figured, hey, fuck, let's let's read. I haven't read it yet. You yeah. haven't read it yet. So it's a new experience yeah. for both of us. So it'll be cool to kind of talk about that on next week's episode. I'm pretty I read a couple of pages. I read, I, read, uh, I read maybe about four pages of volume one. And man, I'm, I'm, I'm in. I don't know what's happening, but it, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, again, <laughs> I, I, I'm taking a, a note out of your book. I'm not even reading the back. I'm just going to start reading the fucking book. I, I, I don't want to know anything about it. Yeah. I think I might have read this solicit years ago, but I forgot. So there's no no thought in my head what this book's about. I'm just gonna crack it open, read from page one. Yeah, dude, um, isn't so, it fun? Like it's like it's like walking into a room that all that you know all your friends are in, but you don't know what's going on. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like, mean it's kind of like I, I recorded a video for uh the YouTube channel last week. I'm not sure when I'm gonna premiere, but I had read the book when it first I, I don't want to say the book. I'd read the book when it first came out and I hadn't read it in probably like at least eight years. And I couldn't remember a fucking thing about the book. Nothing. So when I read it, I was it was like reading it for the first time. So it was it was pretty dope. So I, I hope I can get that experience again with like some other rereads. Black Hammer was still kind of fresh in my mind because it's only been a couple of years since I yeah. read it. But yeah, yeah. dude. Uh, I'm excited to read Euthanauts for next week. I'm excited for, you know, we got some uh, some uh, interesting books coming out. Also, we Savage Dragon. Strange Dragons Adventures 3. <laughs> Strange Adventures 3, Savage Dragon 250. I know maybe some of you guys probably maybe aren't reading it. I am. So <laughs> I'm going to probably fucking talk about that, probably maybe do a video review of that. And you know what? I don't care what anybody says. But I'm kind of looking forward to fucking Snake Eyes by Rob Liefeld. I want to see what that book is about. I'm just curious, dude. You know? I <laughs> hey, you know what? You know what? For all we know, this could be a great book. Like, I'm not going to... I mean, Liefeld is trash, but he hasn't, like... You know, he's he's not, like, Warren Ellis trash. So no. I, I'll, 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 I'll give it a shot. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fucking check it out. I don't give a fuck, dude. Like, I like Snake Eyes. Hey, I'll give Liefeld this, dude. He fucking said DC was going to self-destruct and look what the fuck's happening. So I mocked him when he said it, and I was like, why is he hating on DC? But he obviously knew something we didn't. So, yeah, yeah, I, I'm kind of looking forward to that. And then, you know, I think that I got a couple other books coming out. Uh, Giant Size X-Men with Magneto. That's what I'm Oh, my to. God. That's another one of my picks, like, dude. Like uh, Magneto. I mean, come on, like Magneto. You know, you know what the stuff that's going on right now? like in the world and yeah. and people wear like uh, all these magnetos right shirts like like there's so many people that are not about that magneto life <laughs> like, yeah i love magneto bro i, I love don't know. magneto he's it's cyclops and magneto are tied for me in x characters that are my favorite i mean i and i again i i love wolverine i do but i just love the character of magneto so much dude you know like yeah. i just cuz he's such a flawed character like so, like so, you can agree with like, but like sixty percent of what he says, I like, I agree with. Like, he makes sense, and that's why he's such a he's such just a great as, villain. Like, 
Just, just, uh, just his few panels that he had during uh, the whole House of X, Powers of X, Powers of Ten thing. Like that was like some of his most powerful statements. Yeah, I mean, like so. Um, I mean, yeah, definitely some powerful lines. I mean, obviously J- Jonathan Hickman wrote it, but like told through the mouth of Magneto, like it just he he gets Magneto's voice so well. And I mean, yeah. you're right. I'm excited for that book. We'll see how Empire is. I'm just gonna live through Empire vicariously through you. That's that's. that's I'm not even gonna. Give it a, I'm not even putting it in my pool. Like I'm, well, I I'm mean, not. I'm not, not pull, I mean, I'm not putting it in my fucking pool either. I'm gonna fucking read it at the <laughs> store and then I'm gonna bring it back. <laughs> I'm not gonna waste a fucking penny on that book. Right. Get, get it twisted. Um. Uh, but yeah. So that's that. Um. Also, uh, did an interview yesterday. It's hip hop related. Um. If you guys are not into hip hop, sorry. I am. Dylan is. Yeah. And um. I hope you guys. I hope you guys give it a watch. I'm not sure when I'm posting it. I'm just throwing it out there for any of you guys listening. That's just what this is. This site, podcast, and YouTube is going to be about. I, I love hip hop. This person is also a visual artist as well. So this is this channel is going to be about artists in general, and musicians are artists as well. So get ready for it, guys. Get ready for it. Yeah, and is also this, in, in hip hop news, uh, yesterday. Black Thought released his first single off of Streams of Thought Volume Three, which Fuck is you. amazing. Where is, where is it? Okay, I'm gonna. Okay, as soon as we get off, I'm fucking looking that up. I love Black Thought. He's amazing. Dude, Black Thought is. Uh, he's. It's called uh, Thought versus Everybody. Okay. All right. I'm gonna check it out. <laughs> check it and, out. Then, uh, and then that Eminem and Kid Cudi. Like, I'm. I'm just glad Eminem didn't like. You know, freaking get all was was like all super aggressive on the delivery of this. He actually matches like uh, Kid Cudi's tone. Wait, the song so. is out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He came out on Friday. I, I, I got a lot. I got a lot to do after we get off. Um, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, you guys can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at the Comic Lounge. And again, you can send us your your hate, your love, your comments, suggestions. The Comic Lounge Pod at gmail dot com. We are also on YouTube. I'm still trying to get Dylan to come out of his cave to come do a video with us. Uh, hopefully he does that soon. Um, but, we, soon. but we post interviews. We got the lounging series where, you know, Mario and I are just chatting about comics and different topics off the shelf is where we cover, you know, hardcovers, graphic novels, stuff like that. We post about four to five a week. I will not stop. I can't stop. I'm bored. I got to talk comics, but yeah. So make sure you <laughs> Make sure you fucking follow us and subscribe so that you're notified and stuff every time we put something up that's new. Uh, the podcast is available on YouTube as well. Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, any of your favorite podcast listening channels. I've got nothing else. Dylan, you got anything else you want to say before we get out? Uh, we need more indies. And uh, yeah, that's it. I second that. And on that note, we're out. Lounge and sun.